Hi and welcome to another tutorial on Eagle at ECE101.com. There are a few things that I didn't get to go over in the previous tutorials that I wanted to come back and touch on. So, namely those are using the bus in the schematic, placing components on the back of the board, and rotating components on the board at angles other than um, 90 degrees. And for this, I just loaded up demo one schematic in the examples tutorial folder that comes with Eagle. So what we're going to do for the schematic for the bus on the schematic is we have a pick here that has all of the port A and port B pins um, going over to a header. I'm going to go ahead and delete all these pins, and it's a situation like this where using a bus is a good idea. Um, maybe not in this particular case where this is a, a fairly straightforward low component count um, schematic I mean you, you saw all those signals that are routed pretty cleanly on the schematic but if you have you know a, a more complex schematic where you don't want to have you know uh, let's see here five eight thirteen traces thirteen signals running across your schematic to a different component um, it'd be a good idea to use them. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop a bus here. Select the bus tool, left click, drag, left click. Uh, there we go. And as soon as you place the bus on your schematic, the first thing you want to do is name it. Uh, because it's in the naming that you define the pins, the number, the name of the signals, and the number of the signals on the bus. So we're going to call this, because we're using all the RA pins on the pick, we're going to call it RA. Now to define the number of pins and the numbers, or the number of signals and the numbers of the signals, open up a square bracket and you say 0 dot dot 4 for RA 0 through 4. Now if we also wanted to put port B on here, which I'm not going to do for the time's sake, you would say comma RB open square bracket 0 dot dot 7. There are seven um, pins on port B. And just to show you, if you were to run a signal down here with both ports on there, you'd come in here and select RA, and in this case we're on RA4. Um, but we're just going to do one for now. Say OK. Um, and just like I was doing earlier, you just route your signal over here, this is RA0, RA1, RA2, RA3, and finally RA4. Um, and then on the other end here, you do the exact same thing except for kind of in reverse order. Um, at least that's how I keep it straight. So RA4, Move that off the end of there a little bit. Uh, this is RA3, Oops. RA2, and you can do it in the other order too. You can you can go from the header to the bus just like you did before. There's nothing special about it. RA1, and finally RA0. So there you go. That's how you use a bus. Just remember the naming convention is signal name, open square bracket, the first number of that signal, dot dot, the last number of that signal, close the square bracket. If you want to do the same thing, you put a comma and repeat that, that same uh, pattern. So this is purely cosmetic. On the board, it has no effect. Uh, if you come over here to the board, create this from the schematic, yes you'll see that there are still a whole bunch of traces. There's not one big trace that somehow carries all five of those signals. Um, it's just for helping you keep your schematic clean. So let's, uh, I'm not actually going to lay this board out, so I'm just going to dump all these over here in the middle. Um, since we're here, one thing to look out for is whenever you have a pin header on here it's because you're going to be connecting something to it so it's always 
in my mind, a good idea to keep that pin header on the edge of the board. And here's your programming header um, with some decent spacing between it and any other components because if you're sliding some sort of a cable, a ribbon cable, for example, on there, you need, you need a gap between the header and your other components so that you can actually get that uh, ribbon cable on there. So, uh, to place components on the back of a board, it's so simple, and this is why I didn't cover it in the past, is I forgot about it. Um, but I didn't know how to do this right off the bat either. I had to go figure it out. All you do is select the mirror tool, click on the component that you want to put on the back of the board, for example, this capacitor. You'll notice the pads, the SMD pads, change to blue, signaling, signifying that it's on the back side of the board now. Uh, if you remember that blue is the bottom copper layer. You can do that here. You can do it to through holes, but really it doesn't affect the pads unless you only have copper on one side of the board. Um, now to rotate them at angles other than 90 degrees, you can come over here and just move this out here a little bit. Um, you select the rotate tool, and in fact with the angle tool you can get away with this as well. Uh, maybe not. Uh, I thought you could. Um, with the rotate tool you can for sure though. So if you come up here, normally there's only 0, 90, 180, and 270. I entered in 15 earlier, but let's say you want to do 45 degrees. Just type in 45, press enter. Now when you come over and rotate this guy, you're rotating at 45 degrees. Um, the other way to do it it's not quite as clean in my mind because you don't get the exact angle like you do with typing it in and rotating it but it works is you can hold down control use your left mouse button and just rotate the guy around drag your mouse around to rotate it uh, go forwards backwards you can really trip it out if you try to jump right across the origin um, like I said it's not quite as clean if you look up at the angle box you'll see some funny angles 70.1, 26.5, 33.5 and back to zero. Um, personally I prefer coming up here entering in the exact angle that I want whether it's 15, 45, 30, whatever and rotating it that way. Um, it just helps keep things aligned nicely how you want them. So that's it. If you have more questions Feel free to email me, chris at ece101.com. If you're watching this on YouTube or Blip or any other website that it's posted on, come check out our website. There's a lot of useful information, um, at least I think. We have more info on picks. Um, we're starting to get some basic circuit stuff up, uh, kind of working our way into different areas. Um, this video was based on questions I received from other viewers. so. They do get answered that maybe not in the most timely manner because this is a side project for me, but um, I'd like to help you. So email me your questions. Once again, chris at ece101.com. Check out our website, www.ece101.com. Thanks a lot.